Hello, my dear students and viewers. Welcome to my channel, Scorpio Class. In this video, we are going to discuss a class 10 English chapter from second language English book, lesson number one, Hero. So to understand this chapter, you have to stay tuned till end and do not miss any part of it. And if you're watching my video for the first time, do subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get the notification of all the upcoming videos. So now let's move ahead, but if you also need Hindi lessons explanation and complete notes of class 7, 8, 9 and 10, you can subscribe to Scorpio Class Hindi channel. Its link will be shared in the description box and also in the i button above. So here in this channel, you will find all the videos uploaded of Hindi lessons explanation and complete notes of it of classes 7, 8, 9 and 10. So you can subscribe the channel and also share it with your friends. So now let's get started students with today's chapter hero. And let's look about the author first. So author of this chapter is R.K. Narayanan. And he is very widely considered as one of the greatest Indian English novelists. And he is well known for his simple writing style. He is best known for his works where he set the fictional South Indian town of Malguri. Means whatever story he is setting, he is writing the background. He is taking the background as the town of Malguri, which is a South Indian town. Okay. And his works, some of his important works are Swami and his friends, the Bachelor of Arts, the English teacher, and the financial expert. So these are some of his good works, which are very well known and famous. Then his novel, The Guide, was adopted for film and it also won Sahiti Academy Award. So one of his work was also adapted to make a film and that has won him Sahiti Academy Award. Along with that, he highlights social content and provides a feel for his characters through everyday life. So whatever his story is, whatever he writes, it is related to social content. Like whatever you find in your society, the daily routine, the daily problems, or anything which is in your society, he always relates to those things in his stories. Okay, so this is about the author that is Alkin Narayan in brief. Now let's get started with today's chapter. So we have in paragraphs in points. So let us read and understand it. Okay, so here there is a character. There's a boy by name Swami. And there's his father who is reading a newspaper. So while the father reads a newspaper, there is some conversation going on. There's some talk going on between father and the boy that is Swami. Father reads the newspaper. He says some article. And based on that, there is a long discussion which goes. And father challenges Swami. And so let us see that what is the challenge that is given by father to Swami. And does Swami fulfills that? Does he wins the challenge? Or what happens at the last? So let's see that. So very first point. Let us read first and then understand. For Swami, even took, uh, took an unexpected turn. Father looked over the newspaper he was reading under the hall lamp and said, Swami, listen to this. News has been received about the bravery of a village lad who, while returning home by the jungle path, came face to face with a tiger. The paragraph described the fight the boy had with the tiger and his flight up the tree where he stayed half a day till some people came that way and killed the tiger. Okay, so now this is first paragraph and here we see that Swami, he was talking about some events there and that event took an unexpected turn which he did not expect it. The father looked at the newspaper and he was reading, he came through one article, one news which he wanted Swami to listen. He says, Swami, listen to this. There is a news that there was a there's a boy in a village who is very well known for his bravery. While he was returning from jungle, he came face to face with tiger. So then there's dash pass. That means he is describing the whole incident, how he fought with the tiger, how he saved his life, and how he became such a brave person, and how his article is printed in the paper. So everything is written there. So when he completes that, that uh, that those paragraphs which is described by the about the 
fight of the boy and it also mentions that the ti uh, he had a fight with the tiger this boy and he also had to climb up the tree and he had to stay there on the tree for half a day till some people came there and killed the tiger and then that boy came down so there was this whole incident so the father read this for the boy that is swami and he reads now let us see what discussion goes on what happens next so second point after reading it through father looked at swami fixedly and asked what do you say to that swami said i think he must have been a very strong and grown up person not a boy at all how could a boy fight a tiger you think you are wiser than the newspaper father sneered a man have a have the strength of an elephant and yet be a coward whereas another may have the strength of a straw but if he has courage he can do anything courage is very everything strength and age are not important okay so the second point after he reads the father completes reading the newspaper article now he is looking at swami very fixedly he is asking him some question what do you have to say about this what is your opinion about this so swami says i think this was not a small boy he must have been one strong and grown up person that is why he could fight with a tiger if it was a boy he was he would not be able to fight with a tiger so that means he was not a boy at all so this was the opinion of swami he said to his father so as soon as he said this his father got angry he say you think you are wiser than the newspaper you know more than newspaper he started sneering shouting or telling loudly to him so the father then explains him that a man may have much strength as an elephant but if he is coward he is not brave it's of no use but whereas if you are having a strength of only a straw straw means a small stick or a small pipe which you use to drink juices even if you are having a strength of that straw but if you have courage that can do anything that means you can do any difficult to task also so he says courage is everything strength and age are not important so this was the explanation given by swami's father to swami okay now swami disputed the theory how can it be father suppose i have all the courage what would i do if a tiger should attack me leave alone strength you can can you prove you have courage let me see if you can sleep alone tonight in my office room okay so swami again uh, argues with his father upon this topic that how can it be possible father if suppose if you think i have all the courage and there is a tiger in front of me if he attacks me what will i do in front of him with my courage just tell me so this was the question given by swami now to the father he is asking his father so father is saying leave alone strength now can you prove you have courage let me see if you can sleep alone tonight in my office room so here the challenge starts father is saying okay keep the strength alone leave it alone now you prove me that if you have a courage if you are brave enough let me see that if you can sleep all alone in my office room today and somi was a small boy of uh, suppose like 10 to 11 years or something 12 years so he was not ready to sleep all alone in one single room so the father challenge is the same thing if you are brave if you are courage sleep alone in my office room today let me see if you can accept this challenge and fulfill it okay now let's say three point point number 3 a frightful proposition swami thought he had always slept beside his granny in the passage and any change in this arrangement kept him trembling and awake all night he hoped at first that father was only joking he mumbled weakly yes and tried to change the subject he said very loudly and with a great deal of enthusiasm we are going to admit even elders in our cricket club hereafter we are buying brand new bats and balls a captain had asked me to tell you so now here his when he hears that father has given such a tough challenge for him he thought for some time and he says he was just uh, thinking about it that i always sleep besides my granny and if there is any change in that arrangement of my sleep what will i do how will i sleep all night all night i will have to be awake and um, he hoped that at first father was only joking so all these thoughts came in his mind he was very much nervous he was fearful of sleeping all alone and then he thought maybe my father is joking with me 
And then slowly he said, yes. Mumble means saying something in your mouth as well. The other person cannot hear that. He said, yes, weakly, mumblingly. And then he tried to change the topic and he said to his father in a loud voice that, father, you know, we are going to admit our elders in our cricket club and you know, we are going to bring new bats and balls for our cricket match. And our captain has asked me to inform you. So he tried to change the topic. But father was so smart, he did not listen to this topic so let's see what he says in the fourth point we'll see about that later father cut in you must sleep alone hereafter so we realized that the matter had gone beyond his control from a challenge it had become a command he knew his father's tenacity at such moments okay so now when father was serious now this boy started realizing that the matter has gone very Seriously, it has gone beyond my control. Now I cannot handle this. Now I have to accept this challenge because it is not just a challenge now, but it's a command. It's an order from my father. And he knew at that moment when father is angry, when he is commanding something, he has to do that. Okay. So now see how the challenge is becoming a command and now everything is first for me. Let's see how and what he does. So from the first, next newspaper and father, no. You must do it now. He's, he's thinking, the boy is thinking that let me tell father that from next month I'll sleep or from next week I'll sleep. But father says, no, you must do it right from now itself. It is disgraceful sleeping beside granny or mother. So father is trying to make him convinced that he has to sleep all alone because you are a grown-up boy now. You, you should not sleep beside your granny or mother like a small baby. Come on, you are a grown-up boy now. So you should not do that. And he said that you should, uh, you should take care of yourself and uh, you should not spoil your morals and all those things he started saying. And he was looking at his wife who was rocking a cradle. So the wife thinks that the father is commenting or taunting me. So she says, why do you look at me? Why you say it? I hardly know anything about the boy. No, no, I did not mean you, said father. So the, when the mother got angry because she thought father is taunting or uh, complaining uh, her about the boy. She said, don't say at me. I did not do anything. I don't know anything about the boy. If you want to say something, tell your mother because she is spoiling him. And she turned away and she went away. That means Swami's grandmother. Okay. Then Swami's father's mother. She is saying, tell her she has spoiled your lad. Now, sixth point. So, his father sat gloomily. You know, he was very sad. He was gazing at the newspaper. And then Swami rose silently. Now, Swami, he wanted to just escape from this command. Okay, so he just moved away from there silently. And he went to the bed near his granny. And he started sleeping in the bed. And he tried to act as if he's very sleepy. And he just took the blanket and fell to sleep okay and then the grandmother started asking don't you want to hear a story today because every night grandma used to say him a story but today he was just trying to act as if he has slept because he wanted to escape from sleeping alone in the office so he behaved like this then when grandma asked him like this he made a wild gesticulation since he makes some faces and he wanted his granny to keep in silence and if anybody comes like his father or mother tell them not to disturb me and i am asleep so he did these things he said these things but by the time he finishes everything he sees that he feels that somebody is pulling his blanket from his face and that was his father who was standing there now Granny said, don't cover your face. Are you really very sleepy? Swami leaned over and whispered, please, please shut up, Granny. Okay, so he's tried his Granny to keep quiet and don't talk to me, he's saying. But it did not happen for a long time. And as soon as he went inside the blanket, it was pulled away and it was his father who was standing there. Now, at this time, it was his father who came and stood over him. Swami, get up, he said. And he looked like an apparition in the semi-darkness of the passage. That means his father he was looking like some ghostly kind of thing in that half-darkened room. Okay, so he felt like that. 
and it was lit by a cone of light from the hall why it was looking like it because in the room the lights were off and there was a small candle light which was lighting at the corner of the hall and that little bit of light was coming in the room so you can uh, just imagine how the shadow would be falling falling over there so it was looking like an apparition like some ghost is standing now swami stirred and groaned as if in sleep father said get up swami granny pleaded why do you disturb him so as uh, every grandmothers do they are taking side of they take side of the grandson and the grandchildren so she did the same thing he says she says the son not to disturb the small child who is already sleeping but father is not listening he's saying get up swami he said for the third time and swami had to got up because he knew father is very angry now so father rolled up his bed he took it and took it under his arm and said come with me so he went in the office room he made his bed over there and he said you have to sleep over here on the way he threw a look of a pill at his mother and she said why do you take him to the office room he can sleep in a hall i think okay so as her uh, even a mother was trying to support the boy why you talking taking him into the office room all far away he can also sleep all alone in the hall so you can make him sleep here why you taking him so far away but father did not answer he just looked at her and he went away from there so i don't think so father said and swami stood behind him with bowed head let me sleep in the hall father now when he got a chance swami saying let me sleep in the hall itself i'll sleep all alone there but your office room is very dusty and there may be scorpions behind your law books there are no scorpions little fellow sleep on the bench if you like can i have a lamp burning in the room no you must learn not to be afraid of darkness so swami tried to give all excuses first he said let me sleep in the hall secondly he said if there are scorpions behind the law books or the books which are kept in the office so father says no there are no, nothing like that and if you are afraid you can sleep on the bench whichever bench you like there then he says can i have a small lamp burning in the room because it's so dark even that is not accepted by the father he says no you must learn to sleep in darkness without a fear so here you have to cultivate good habits will you at least leave the door open this was the last question asked by the swami that is the boy so father accepted that he said all right you can keep the door open but promise you won't roll up your bed and go to your granny's side at night if you do it i will make you the laughing stock of your school okay so father warns him you can keep the door open but you should not roll your bed and go to granny's room and sleep again besides sir if i find that then i will make a joke of you i'll go and say the whole incident in your school and everybody will laugh at you so like this the conversation went on and father forced the boy to sleep all alone in, at night in the office room the swami felt cut off from the humanity means he was left all alone as if he has been uh, separated from all the human humans so it was like that for him now he was very much in pain and he was angry also but he couldn't do anything so he was thinking like how cruel my father is now by nature and then he hated that newspaper person who ever printed the tiger story because of that tiger story he had to do all these things so let us see what happened next point as the night advanced uh, the color of the house deepened and he started getting nervous and his heartbeat started beating very fast you know if you are afraid and if you are very nervous sometimes if you are all alone at home how you feel so same thing was happening with uh, this boy here swami and he started remembering all the devils and ghost stories or whatever he had heard throughout his life now when he was all alone everything he could recollect him it and now he was getting too afraid now he was thinking like there is some ghost coming from this side and uh, the other stories very fearful stories which were there everything started coming in his mind he was faint with fear only a ray of light from the street lamp straight in and cast shadows on the wall so when there is complete darkness in your room and there is some space a small hole from where you can see the light coming from the next room you can see the shadows and on the walls at that time if there is a light very little dim light you can see the shadows so that was the uh, condition of that room and he could see different kinds of shadows on the wall now he could hear so many noises also at night because it was completely silence he could hear the noise of tickling the clock rustling of trees snoring sounds of different peoples 
and the humming of insects. Everything was heard and the shadows on the wall. Just imagine what would be the condition of that boy who is sleeping all alone in the office room for the first time in his life. So he covered himself so completely that he could not see anything, nor he could hardly breathe. When you cover your face completely with the blanket, what happens? You find difficulty in breathing. So now that was the condition of this boy. Now every moment he expected the devils to come up to carry him away. Now every moment he was thinking, now some of the other devil will come and it will take me away from here. And he was too much like afraid you can say and there was one instance which he has heard that his old friend who was in fourth class he suddenly got disappeared and was said to have been carried off by ghost to slam or nepal so all this nonsense stories he could just recollect and he was getting more and more afraid because he was all alone then when he was not relaxed he got up he went under the bench and he just put his eyes tightly closed and he just thought this is a safer place and he again covered himself with the blanket and he slept there and again he started getting nightmares and he thought that the tiger is chasing him and again the same news it uh, this tried it started coming in his mind and now he wanted to escape from the tiger and he could hear its claws crash the ground he could hear the noise of the lion which was sorry tiger which was coming near him to catch him now, when he was imagining all these things in his dreams, he was having a nightmare. He tried to open his eyes, but his eyelids would not open. And the nightmare continued and continued. It threatened to continue forever. And Swami groaned in despair. He just shouted and he got up. Now, with despair effort, he got up and then he put his hand out to feel his granny's presence. Now, he thought, just let me check whether my granny is there or not beside Although he was sitting, sleeping in all alone in single other room in the office room. Because he had a habit of checking whether granny is sleeping besides or not whenever he had this kinds of nightmares. But he only touched the wooden leg. When he touched for granny, he just found that there are wooden legs of the benches which, will come, which were kept over there. And his lonely state came back to him. Now again, he started getting pure. He started sweating with frightened. And now this was rustling. He moved to the edge of the bench and stared into the darkness. Now he saw that something is moving there. When he, again, he was frightened. Now he had no option there. He had to sleep all alone. And he felt that something is moving over there. He was very much uh, afraid, and but he was gazing that in a horror. Means he was staring at that moving, which was something which was moving. He was gazing, he was looking at it continuously with a great fear. And he thought his hand, end had come. He thought, now I'm going to go from this wall. And then he realized that it is a devil which has, has come to take him away. Then as it came near to him, he thought, anyhow, devil is going to tear and eat me up. So why not let me go nearby him and let, him, let me have a fight with him. And after that, if he kills me, no issues. Anyhow, I have fought with him. So from under the bench, he saw me, went near that moving thing. And he hugged it tightly, went hold it tightly, and it, he bite it with his teeth very tightly, very strongly, like a mortal weapon. Like if you press any sharp weapon on your skin, how will you feel? You will have a great wound, right? In the same way with his teeth, he hold that moving thing very tightly. So as soon as he did this, I knew there was a long voice which was heard. And it was thundering and crying noise. And when this noise came, that person, something which was moving, that was some person there, some thief over there. He, he fall on the furniture and there was a loud noise. So when this noise came of falling down, of furniture being falling, and this person's shouting noise. So father, cook, and the servant, whoever were there in the house, they started, they ran and came over there. They put the light. And all the three of them fell on the burglar. So he was a burglar who was moving there. Okay, he was a thief. And he, he lay amidst the furniture. Means he was fallen down near the furniture. And he was having a bleeding ankle. Means his legs were bleeding. Why it was bleeding? Because Swami had bitten it. Now, that person was caught. Father, cook and servant caught him. He was handed over to the police. Now, congratulations are showered on Swami next day. Next day, Swami became a very famous person. He was congratulated by everyone. His classmates looked at him with respect. Teachers gave him 
uh, uh, praises. He was praised by all. Even the headmaster said that you are a true scout. And he had bitten the flesh of one of the most notorious burglar. Now, this burglar, he was one of the notorious and most wanted burglar in the city. And the police was behind him. He, behind this burglar, it was like he was most wanted burglar in the society. Now, that burglar was caught by Swami. So, just imagine how much of praises he would have got. Now, then the inspector, police inspector said, why don't you join the police when you grow up? So, Swami just, because he wanted to be very polite, he said, yes, I am thinking to do that itself. I am thinking to be a police after I grow up. Though he had in his mind to become an engine driver or a railway guard or a bus conductor, in later in his life but for politeness he said yes i will do that then when he returned home from the club the father asked that night where is the boy now so he's already asleep they said and uh, where was uh, he uh, the mother says he was not asleep last night the whole night he was all alone he did not say when he has gone to sleep very early at 7 30 itself so he's sleeping so where is he sleeping? The father inquired. He said, they said he is sleeping near again beside the granny herself. So no wonder he wanted to be asleep. So father understands that he wanted to go sleep very fast because he knew if I come, I will catch him again and I will tell him to sleep in the office room alone again. So he did not want me to catch him. So he slept alone, slept fast. So he's very clever boy, the father says. Then the mother lost her temper. He said, why do you be behind him you let him sleep wherever he likes why do you want to risk his life again once you have already risked his life the burger if you would have killed him what would have happened so father mumbled as he went into the chain which he said something slowly that all right small spoil him as much as you like don't blame me later on that father has uh, spoiled swami and swami he was just acting to be sleep but he was listening everything whatever conversation was going on and he felt very relieved to hear that father was giving up and father is not going to force him now to sleep all alone in the office room. So like this, Swami was also relieved. And yes, he also won the challenge for one single day. He had many praises because he was he has helped uh, the fullest person to catch the most wanted burglar. Though it was unknowingly done, though he was very fearful, but he did a brave work over there. So this is how he was praised all over and he also did his challenge but the next day when father wanted he did not come there so now father also gave up he did not say anything so this is the story all about the boy swami and the father this was the challenge to sleep all alone in the office room and yes it was fulfilled for one day by the boy swami and he was also praised so you heard the story the lesson hero gets over i hope you all understood the story and the chapter and if you like the video, do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel Scorpio Class. Also subscribe Scorpio Class Hindi channel and stay tuned for more such videos. Thank you.